What's up, Mad25 Gamers? Today we're going to be doing a full playbook breakdown. I'm going to explain why we're doing a full playbook breakdown right now. Um, basically, what I'm going to be doing is this is kind of to get you guys started defensively, and I really do want to apologize to all of my subscribers and all of my members um, because I just cannot put out the defensive ebook right now that I have to re record all of the formations. And I have to, um, I still have a lot of writing to do. Um, and the reason is because, um, as you guys may have known, the Hop Hodge PVR has been uh, up and down this season. And I went back and was looking through some of my content and noticed that all of my ebook videos, over five hours of content, was, um, it was just not good enough. It was horrible. Uh, it wasn't necessarily the, the content, it was the, quality and uh, I really want to apologize to you guys for that so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to release this free uh, and the ebook will be free but this is a free video guide it's not gonna be written uh, I'm gonna try to maybe get the setups to you um, but I'm not gonna like explain a whole lot in terms of the writing aspect of it so this is gonna be just a full free scheme out of the Miami Dolphins defensive playbook now the ebook that I'm writing is going to be out of the Cincinnati playbook and a lot of these concepts are going to carry over and uh, but we're going to talk a lot about why I like Miami I like both I, I go back and forth between Miami and Cincinnati so I wanted to go ahead and break down Miami and we're not going to necessarily give you everything that you're going to get in the ebook but we are going to give you a lot of the content um, now that doesn't mean that when the ebook comes that it's going to be absolutely worthless for you to download it and, and actually watch some of the content um, when the ebook does come out, which is going to hopefully be uh, by the end of September, um, you'll be able to download it and it'll be able to work properly. Hopefully the videos will not delete themselves or, or crap out on me, so you'll be able to do that. And what, what it's going to be is it's going to be a lot more in-depth than this. It's going to be a lot more well done than this. This is a simple scheme that you can run tonight. Um, now, there is a lot of content in this scheme. I'll say that right now as I drop my controller. Um, I'll say that right now. There is a lot of content in this scheme. I mean, this scheme is probably closer to that of what you would normally get in an ebook. But I always hold myself to a higher standard. And um, I just could not. I, I was killing myself. I was staying up late hours recording video after video after video, trying to redo it all and trying to get it all in. And it just, just didn't work out. So... Uh, as as a token of you know as as a sorry I guess uh, you're gonna get this free scheme here and then the ebook will come out soon uh, it's not gonna be charged for uh, but it will be a downloadable PDF ebook uh, unless I can figure out how to get the software to work to make um, an actual ebook so for right now uh, we're gonna hop into Miami's book and I again I really do apologize there wasn't anything I could do about it. Uh, it was just not, it was just, it just didn't work, it just didn't happen, and I really, I really do apologize, uh, it probably hurts me a lot more than it hurts you guys, because I spent a lot of time in this guide, and, and after an hour, I can redo it all, so, but it's good, because you guys are going to get refined content, so, uh, anyways, what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at the audibles I have preset for Miami's playbook, and in order to set your audibles, guys, you want to go into custom playbooks, Pick the Miami Dolphins defensive playbook and you can set your custom audibles. And then you want to save it and then you'll be able to use it online and in Connected Careers mode. As far as tournaments are concerned, you can set your audibles in-game because uh, it's an offline mode. Alright, All right. so the audibles I have are 4-3 stack, 2 man under, 4-3 stack, cover 3 cloud, 4-3 stack, will 2 fire, and 4-3 stack, Sam 3 fire. 4-3 um, under... Uh, and what I tried to do with all these formations was I tried to get a combination of things. I tried to get a man blitz, a zone blitz, a base zone, and a base man. All in one formation and then have a run defense kind of universal. Alright, so 4-3 under, I've got 2 man under, edge sting, will punch 3 seam, and Mike will cross. 4-3 over, I have 2 man under, CB dog zone, zone blitz, and smoke mid zone 2. 4-3 over plus, uh, I have the cover 2 man, the cover 2, the cover 2 sink, and the cover 6. 46 bear under. I got the two man under, the LB dogs, the cover two, and the cover three. Nickel normal, I have the sugar cover three buff, the sugar blitz, the sugar three DB fire, and the sugar three C. Nickel wide nine, I have the sugar blitz, the sugar cover three bluff, the sugar two disguise, and the sugar three DB fire. And the dime normal, I have the two man under, the DB blitz, the DB blitz two, and the three double buzz. In the dollar three two six formation, I have the two man under, the cover three, the cover two sink, the cover six. 
In the quarter normal formation, I have the two men under spy, the under smoke, the DB strike zone, and the double loop three. In the quarter three deep formation, I've added the man up three deep, the three deep blitz, the cover two sink, and the cover three. And then lastly, in the goal line five three three formation, I have the GM cover one, the Sam blitz, the flat buzz, and the three deep under. All right, guys. Now that is our uh, audible setup, and let's take a look at the depth chart. Uh, I chose the Jets for this. Um, but we, there are certainly other teams that can use this. Obviously, the Niners are probably going to be the best team for this defense. Dallas can use it. All the defensive teams can use it. Just use this as a blueprint and apply it to them. All right, at the left defensive end, and this is important, you want to do the backups. You want to put your best linebacker at the backup defensive end. All right? Uh, but anyways, number one, DN, I got Copples. Uh, number two, or right end, I got Richardson. Defensive tackles, I've got Wilkerson at number one and Ellis at number two. Linebacker on the outside, I got Antoine Barnes uh, with Ricky Sapp backing him up. I got middle linebacker Demario Davis, uh, the, 90, the 87 speed, uh, really effective and pretty. I think he has pretty high hit power too. Um, right of screen outside or left of screen outside linebacker or the right outside linebacker on your depth chart, I got David Harris. The defensive backs, I've got the um, Cromartie, Milliner, Wilson, Walls, and I got Trufant. And then at the safety positions, I've got Jaquan Jarrett. Uh, followed by Jarrett Bush, and then I got DeWan Landry, followed by Jaquan Jarrett, and then uh, finally Antonio Allen. So that's the depth chart. Uh, obviously, you can apply that to your team, figure out what best works best for you. Let's hop into the base formation now. The 4-3 under is obviously going to be the base, um, and there's a lot we can do with this uh, formation, uh, especially in Miami. They have a couple of plays that um, some of the other ones don't have, so obviously we can take advantage of that. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over universal pressure, I'm just going to break down the formation now. So um, what we want to do is, and, and this is for me, the base play out of this formation is going to be the cover three buzz. Okay, Cover three buzz is the base play. It's a simple play we can call, and it's going to allow me to break down everything I need to break down. But typically I'll call the will plus three seam on first down. But since it's in our quick audibles, there's no reason for us to come out in it. All right. So what we like to do with universal pressure setups is we like to base the line. Uh, we like to press coverage. We're then going to spread our defensive line. And depending on what side of the uh, we want to send pressure off of is going to dictate what side we blitz off of. So in this situation, we're going to be blitzing off the right. So we're going to crash our defensive line to the right side of the screen. We're going to uh, re-blitz our right off screen outside linebacker. We're going to spread our outside linebackers. And then we're going to quarterback contain Richardson, and we're going to quarterback contain Wilkerson. And at the snap of the ball, you're going to get right edge pressure coming in at the quarterback. All right? So that's the right edge pressure. I think you could also quarterback spy those backside guys. Uh, so quarterback spy Richardson, quarterback spy w Wilkerson, everything else is the same. And... Yep, you can do that. So if you want to do that, you certainly can. Uh, it's just based off personal preference. I kind of like the contains this year. Uh, they play the flats a little better than they did last year. Um, I don't know. I'm just, I don't know. It's just something different. You could spy contain. I mean, you can do so many things, guys. Uh, spy contain does not work as well as double spies. So just keep that in mind. So the right, that's the right edge pressure. Left edge pressure is we're going to base a line and press again. We're going to spread our defensive line, and we're going to crash our defensive line out. We're going to spread our linebackers, and we're going to re-blitz the left of screen outside linebacker. We're going to click onto Richardson, and we're going to move him over one step, blitz him, and then we're going to click off. And I like to put both backside linemen on the right side in quarterback contains. And at the snap of the ball, you're going to see we're going to get left edge pressure from the defensive end. Okay? Now, if, what, if, what if we want to get two-way pressure? Say they block a running back. Well, we want to do the same thing that we did for the right edge and the left edge. We're going to do them at the, at, in the same play now. So we're going to base a line. We're going to press coverage. We're going to spread our defensive line. We're going to crash our defensive line out. We're going to re-blitz both outside linebackers, and we're going to spread our linebackers. Then we're going to click on to Sean Richardson here, and we're going to move him over one step, and then we're going to re-blitz him, and then we're going to click off. And at the snap of the ball, you're going to see that we're going to still get the right edge pressure, even though they were able to pick up the left edge pressure by blocking a running back. This is effective because in situations in long yardage, we'll be able to still get pressure. All right. 
So that is the 4300 basic universal pressure setups. Now let's get into how we like to run each individual play. Cover 3 buzz, what we like to do, and this is for the basic principle of the, of the formation, we like to spread our line, spread our linebackers, in a situation like this, we'll manually move this guy in. And what I want to do here is this is just an all-out basic coverage. We just want to see what they're all about. So I like to quarterback spy this guy, and I like to put both of the flat zones in purple zones. And then I'll call the disguise cushion coverage because we know that that makes zones play a little bit better in Madden 25. And as a step of the ball, we're just going to use it with Davis and, and kind of just try and take away all the quick reads and force a block should sack. This is actually a really good coverage overall. It's going to allow us to get a basic idea of where our opponent wants to go. Um, and that's how I run the base play. Like I said, I don't run the base play often. It's just something I mix in. All right. The actual first down play call is the will punch we seem just like last season. Um, and what we want to do with this is we want to baseline press, and we're going to spread our defensive line. We're going to quarterback contain Muhammad Wilkerson, and we're going to uh, move Richardson over one step, re-blitz him, and then click off. And then we want to get on to Davis, and we're going to pass commit. I personally like to shade zones to sidelines. And then I'm going to use it in the middle of the field. And you see we're going to get that left edge. Ooh, you picked it up that time. But we are supposed to get that left edge pressure. Um, you guys may try this setup if that one's not working for you. It normally will work for you, but sometimes it doesn't because of the way that the blitz angles are, are working in Madden 25. So move him over one step, re-blitz him. And then quarterback contain Wilkerson, quarterback contain Ellis, and quarterback contain Copples. And now you're going to pass commit, and you're going to see now... Ooh, he still picked up the pressure. Hmm. I guess I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Dang it. Okay, so let's see. You may not be able to, because I was running this, I was literally running this like five seconds ago. Um, you may have to leave the dude on his blitz angle. You see, you can get that pressure, but it's not as fast as the defensive end. So that's just personal preference. But if you want that pressure, all you have to do is baseline press, spread your defensive line, and you're going to quarterback contain Muhammad Wilkerson. And then if you want to, just for looks, click on Richardson, move him over, act like you've made a hot route, click off, and at the snap of the ball, you're going to get the B-gap pressure from the dude. Uh, actually, I guess you can't move Richardson over because when we did that, it actually picked up the blitz. So I would recommend probably not moving Richardson over unless you're running your universal pressure. And uh, real quick, one of the reasons we really like the Will Punch Seam is if I slide protect my line to the left side of the screen, I'm going to end up getting almost an A-gap blitz from Muhammad Wilson there. You see, uh, let's take a look at the instant replay. And it works really well with the Niners because I could put Alden Smith at that position. Um, but you see you see that angle he gets? He gets a really sharp angle to quarterback. Typically will get through. Uh, actually find a lot more success of him coming through the A-gap in-game. So this is a nice way because they can't slide, to, they can't slide protect the blitz. Uh, if they slide protect, they're just going to make the blitz worse. Okay, so you see that's the basic setup. Uh, out of the wheel three seam. This is what we really like to run on first down situations, uh, more specifically on first down situations where they're on the left hash of the field. Okay. Now, what about second down? What about if we, you know, anywhere from second and eight, or actually anywhere from second and seven up, so second and seven to second and eight to second and nine, all the way up to however far away we can push them back. We like to run the play called Mike Will Cross three. And what we want to do with this is we're going to base the line press. Spread our defensive line, and then I like, you know, something like this, we're going to manually move him back. We're going to shade our coverage out, call the disguise cushion coverage, and we're going to use her, the middle linebacker, we're going to put him in hooks on user him, and you see we're going to have pretty good coverage overall. Not a whole lot of places to go deep, and we're going to force them to take underneath drag routes, quick throws, um, so that we can possibly get them in a third and long. Now, in situations where it's second and short, uh, this is where the two-man under comes into play. So we like to call two-man under in that situation. And what we're going to do is we'll just um, run all out max coverage defense. So we're going to shade our coverage out. And then what I like to do is I like to put Wilkerson and I like to put Ellis in, in uh, hook zones. And I'll base line twice so that they widen out. And then I'll quarterback spy... Um, the defensive end opposite the side of the hand of the quarterback. So, for example, since Michael Vick is left-handed, I'm going to spy um, Quentin Copples. But if, Tom, if we're playing Tom Brady, we know he's right-handed, so we're going to spy Richardson and blitz Copples straight down. And at the snap of the ball, you're going to see we're going to send one guy, so we're going to have pretty good coverage, and Copples is a beast. He's going to get in uh, pretty quick overall. 
And this is for second down and short. Alright? And then lastly, guys, for third down and short situations, this is where I really like this play, edge steam. What we want to do with this is we want to try to get two guys free at the quarterback. So what I like to do is I like to baseline press, and then I like to call man align. When we call man align coverage, they're going to automatically man themselves up over the guy they should be guarding. Okay, so they it's an obvious tell we're going to be sending a lot of people, but we can disguise it and do different things out of this play. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to spread your defensive line and crash them out in terms of setting up the blitz. You're then going to proceed to spread your linebackers and just re-blitz Sean Richardson on the outside here. And then I like to put some zone hot routes on the field. Uh, so in this example, we're going to put Milliner here in a purple zone, Davis in a deep blue, and we're going to shade the coverage to the left so he gets over there. And at the snap of the ball, you're going to see we're going to get two guys free at the quarterback. Um, let me try that again. I don't know what I did wrong there. Oh, you got to move, Richardson. Yeah. All right, now it should come in. Again, we want a man line. And I really like, I'm a big fan of running zone on one side of the field and man on the opposite side. So a situation like this, we could put Cromartie in a hug zone, Jared in a purple zone, Landry in a hug zone, baseline twice, press coverage, and then call man line. And you see it's going to change the zones that they were in. And at the snap of the ball, you're going to see that you're going to now get uh, a guy off the left edge. All right, so that's the edge sting. That's the basic pressure setup. One more time, we're going to go through it. Uh, if you're just looking to set up pressure, baseline press, spread your defensive line, crash your defensive line out, spread your linebackers, click onto this defensive end on the left, move him over one step, and then re-blitz him. And at the snap of the ball, you're going to get pressure off of the left and right edge. All right. That's the edge sting. Like I said, I don't call it often, but uh, when I do call it, I try to you know, send heavy pressure out of it. So that's the 4-3 under basics of the 4-3 under. Moving across to the 4-3 stack, and this is a situation, uh, this is probably what I would call my second base formation. And I like to use this in situations where um, the Sam, uh, where we want to use the SAM 3-fire. A situation like that would be if they're on the right side of the field pre-snap. And uh, what we want to do out of this is we want to just base a line, press... Spread our line, spread our linebackers. And if we want to get universal pressure out of this, we're going to crash our defensive line down. We, if we want to send pressure off the left, we're going to re-blitz our left outside linebacker. This goes for every play out of 4-3 stack. We're going to contain both defensive tackles and the opposite side defensive end that we're blitzing from, which in this case would be Quentin Copples because we're trying to send pressure off the left. And as you see at the snap of the ball, we're going to get that left edge pressure at the quarterback. Now this is effective, uh, really effective in Madden 25. And if you want to do it from the right, here we'll go to two man under and show you. What we like to do is we like to base the line and press, spread your defensive line, crash your defensive line down, spread your linebackers. You're going to globally re-blitz your right of screen outside linebacker. And then you're going to quarterback contain your left of screen defensive end, your left of screen defensive tackle, and most importantly your right of screen defensive tackle. And you're going to see that you're going to get pressure off of the right edge. Now, what if we want to get double edge pressure? Where we're going to get the same, we're going to send the same heat, uh, but they're going to try to block a running back. So we're going to commit another guy to blitzing. So what we want to do is we're going to base a line and press, spread your defensive line, spread your linebackers, re-blitz both outside linebackers, crash your defensive line down, and quarterback contain both defensive tackles. And now you're going to see we're going to get pressure off that right edge, even though they are blocking a halfback. So that is the basic pressure concepts of the 4-3 stack. Let's get into the main plays. Sam 3 fire is probably the most called play out of 4-3 stack. What we like to do with this is it just, uh, it's, it's the, it's the complement to the wheel punch 3 seam. It's used uh, uh, when the offense is on the right hash or the right side of the field. We like to send the Sam 3 fire. Setup is very simple. Baseline and press, spread your defensive line, spread your linebackers. Globally re-blitz your right outside linebacker. And then quarterback contain your left to screen defensive end, your left to screen defensive tackle, and your right to screen defensive tackle. I like to pass commit personally, and at the snap of the ball, you're going to see you're going to get right edge pressure at the quarterback. All right. Um, now, what if we wanted to get uh, a coverage defense out of Sam through fire? Well, we certainly can do that. Uh, in situations where they're, you know, and maybe in second and short, and I really don't want to call a man play, I'll call this. So I'll baseline and press. I'll spread my line. I will not spread my linebackers. I will first re-blitz the outside linebacker on the right side of the screen, and then I will spread them so that he gets a straight down blitz angle. I will then proceed to 
put my left of screen defensive end in a quarterback spy, my left of screen defensive tackle in a curdle flat zone, my right of screen defensive tackle in a curdle flat zone, and I'm going to re-blitz my right of screen defensive end. I personally like to use the middle linebacker in this defense. And at the snap of the ball, you see the pressure's not great, but it will come in faster than if we're only sitting one guy at the quarterback, which will make our coverage be a little bit better based because we can send heavier pressure at the quarterback. All right, guys, that's the Sam Fire 3. Moving on to the next play out of the 4-3 stack. The next play I want to break down is the Cover 3 Cloud. Now, this is similar. Uh, this is our base zone coverage from the cover from the 4-3 stack. This I like to use in situations when... Um, you know, it's second and medium. This is kind of like my Michael Cross. And like I said, if they're on the left, if you're imagining this right now, if they were on the left hash mark, this is where we would definitely call this cover three cloud. Uh, this cover three cloud is a little bit better uh, in terms of right side field coverage. What we like to do is we like to baseline press, spread our defensive line, spread our linebackers. Now, the only weakness in the cover three cloud is the uh, is the curl to flat on the right side and the flat on the left side. So what I like to do is, I like to put my cornerback on the right side of the screen in a hook zone. Then I'm going to quarterback spy my defensive tackle, and I'm going to baseline my defense twice, and then call press coverage again. I also like to use the disguise cushion feature so that my zones play a little better, and at the snap of the ball, I am responsible for the left side seams. See, I cover the left side seams here, and this is a nice play to mix in in situations where, you know, they have to pass, and you're forcing them to take the underneath passing patterns. All right? So the next play we want to take a look at is the will to fire. This is uh, for situations where we want to send heavy pressure at the opponent. What I like to do, and, and this is for that third and, uh, third and seven, third and eight, this is your play. What you want to do is you want to baseline press, spread your defensive line, Spread your linebackers. Then you're going to re-blitz both outside linebackers, and you're going to quarterback contain both of the defensive tackles. You're then going to yellow uh, or hot route both safeties to hook zones, base line twice, and then you're going to press coverage and call the disguise cushion. You're personally going to use the middle of the field to watch out for quick slants and drags. You're staying at seven yards, and you're trying to force a bad read. By sitting double pressure, we're going to negate the opportunity they have to pick up the blitz by blocking a halfback. This is a great opportunity to send heavy pressure to your opponent in those situations where you need to get a stop. And then the last play from the 4-3 stack is the two men under. Um, besides running an all-out max coverage defense, I really like this play in third down and 10 or more. What I like to do is I like to base a line. Do not press because you're in two men under. Spread my defensive line, spread my linebackers. Then I like to come uh, reboots both outside linebackers and contain both defensive tackles. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put both safeties in hook zones and base line twice. And I'm going to put my middle linebacker in a deep blue zone. And what's going to happen here is like a, they just cover everything really well. And the pressure is so quick that they just don't have enough time to hit me deep. And, and that's what I really like about this play. we got the two men under trail coverage on the outsides. And it's uh, just a very difficult play to stop. All right, guys. Now we're going to go to my main pressure package out of this formation, out of my 4-3 sets, the 4-3 over plus. So this is the formation I like to go to when I want to send heavy pressure at my opponent. First things first, uh, really all we do from the 4-3 over plus, <coughs> excuse me, really all we do from the 4-3 over plus is send um, pressure, uh, basic pressure concepts at them. So it's out of any play. It doesn't matter what play you run it out of. I personally like the cover two sink probably the most. And what we want to do is if we want to send it off the left side, we're going to base a line and press our coverage, spread our defensive line, spread our linebackers. Once we do that, you see that we get this look. I, you know, If this happens, maybe I'll slide him in. And if we want to get pressure off the left side, we're going to globally re-blitz the left of screen outside linebacker. We're going to quarterback contain the left of screen defensive tackle. And we're going to quarterback spy both the right of screen defensive tackle and the right of screen defensive end. I personally like to stand over the center with my with my user player at the snap of the ball, and I'm going to make sure that I cover those left side slants. And at the snap of the ball, you're going to see we're going to get that left edge pressure at the quarterback. All right. Now, what if we wanted to get right edge pressure? Well, we're going to do the same exact thing we just did, but we're going to flip it. So we're going to baseline and press. We're going to spread our defensive line. We're going to spread our linebackers. We're then going to crash our defensive line down. And instead of containing the right of screen defensive tackle, this time we're going to re-blitz him. We also need to, of course, re-blitz the outside linebacker on the right side of the screen. And then what I like to do is, again, you want to quarterback spy both defensive tackles, or both of the 
excuse me, you want a quarterback spy, the left of screen defensive tackle, and the left of screen defensive end. Again, I really like to use her over the center in this situation. And at the snap of the ball, you see you're going to get that right edge pressure at the quarterback. Now, this is really effective because you're only sitting, um, you know, five guys at the quarterback, but two of them are quarterback spies, so this is a really effective blitzing scheme out of the 4-3 over plus that we could use uh, to our advantage to not send as many at the quarterback, but have a lot better coverage. I like these uh, as my basic pressure plays uh, to use. You can cycle through any coverage you want, uh, so you can definitely be flexible, but what I like most out of the 4-3 over plus is calling uh, this is my uh, fourth down and three play. I'll call the cover two out of the 4-3 over plus. I'm going to base a line. I'm not going to press coverage. And I'm going to spread my line. I'm going to uh, crash my defensive line down. Spread both line and spread my linebackers and rebus both of them. And now to set up the double side pressure, we're going to quarterback contain Muhammad Wilkerson and we're going to reblitz Kendrick Ellis here. And then what I like to do is I like to get onto Laurent Landry and I like to do the same thing I did earlier. I like to put them both in hook zones and I like to base line my defense twice. I don't call this guy's cushion in this situation because I want them to play the underneath zone. At the snap of the ball, my job is to try to trick the opponent. So I'm going to go fake left, fake right, and just try to jump whatever I can, and the pressure is going to be coming in hot. So that's my call for situations like a fourth and short. Uh, as far as fourth over plus, um, coverage, de or, uh, third down and long yardage. Uh, if it's third and 12 or more, I always call this play out of the fourth over plus. Cover two man, it's basically two man under. And I'm going to call, I'm going to base the line, I'm going to shade my coverage out. Spread my line, crash them down, spread my linebackers, reblitz both of them. Quarterback contain Muhammad Wilkerson, reblitz Kendrick Ellis. And then the only thing I have to do is user Dominic Davis up the middle of the field. And everything's going to be covered that they can do deep. And you see that we're going to be able to get that sack or force that bad throw into coverage in that th third down and long situation. All right, so that's the basics of the 4-3 over plus. Um, and now let's talk about the 4-3 over. Now, the only play I want to break down out of the 4-3 over is universal pressure. So universal pressure from 4-3 over, we're going to use two men out here. What we want to do is we want to base a line. We want to press coverage. We want to spread our defensive line, and we want to crash it out. We want to spread our linebackers. And then we're going to re-blitz the left outside linebacker if we want them to come off the left edge. And as you can see, we're going to get that pressure off of the rough left edge at the quarterback. Alright, and if we want it to come off the, whoops, not in the 4-3 over. If we want it to come off the left edge again, uh, spread your defensive line, crash your defensive line to the left, re-blitz that left outside linebacker, and at the snap of the ball you see you're going to get that left edge pressure. Alright, okay. If we want to set off the right side, we're going to baseline and press, spread our defensive line, spread our linebackers, we're going to re-blitz the right of screen outside linebacker, Crash out of hits the line out and re-blitz the right of screen defensive end. At the snap of the ball, you're going to get that right B-gap pressure of the opponent. Now, I don't hang my hat on the 4-3 over pressure simply because it's not as good as the 4-3 over plus, the 4-3 stack, or even the 4-3 under. But what I do hang my hat on on 4-3 over is uh, the, I call it the formation of extremes. We either use extreme run defense or extreme max coverage defense. A play like zone blitz, in my opinion, is one of the best plays of Madden 25. We're going to spread our defensive linebackers. And we're going to sh um, move Richardson over one notch, and we're going to re-blitz him. All right, then we're going to get onto Wilkerson, and we're going to put him into a hook zone. We're going to put Ellis into a purple zone, or a quarter flat. We're going to quarterback spy Quentin Copples here. And then we're going to put Dominic Davis here. This is our um, deep blue zone. And then I like to put Jaquan Jarrett in a hook zone. And I'll base line twice, press coverage, and I'll call that disguise cushion coverage. This is going to rebalance my play so that it works more effectively. I like to use their barns here. Now, the snap of the ball, you're going to see this is one of the better coverage Gs in the game because the two-man pressure comes in pretty quick, and uh, it's actually got really, good, really, really good coverage. So that's how I like to use the zone blitz. It's a coverage defense situation, and in that situation where they're in a two-minute drill or something, we need to slow them down. And then the last play from the 4-3 formations is this 4-3 over CB dog zone. This is my sellout run defense out of the 4-3 formations. What I like to do with this is I like to use it the middle linebacker, and I like to try to lock up heavy, heavy, heavy running attacks, obviously. So in situations where they may be running power up, well, I'm going to be using the linebacker. My assignment is the B gap and the A gap on, on either side. So I like to back my guy up. I see power O, so I come over here, fill the gap, and the corners come off and make a tackle. 
five if they if they suspect they maybe run it to the left. Well, all right, I see power O. I feel I come down, feel my gap, and unfortunately Ridley breaks a tackle and uh, took it almost a distance there. That can happen sometimes in this game. Um, let me show you again. If they run power O, I come up and fill the gap. Okay, I see that he's not going to cut it back in. Man, Ridley is a boss right now breaking tackles. But you see, um, the, the guys are in position to make plays. And your job is just to fill, fill your lane. And on the right side is actually a little better. So, And then again, if they run it to the left, I mean, we've had them both times. You just get out wide and um, cover it. So that's the basic uh, idea behind this run defense. It's not very com it's not very complex. It will stop read option. What I like to do against read option um, is I really really like to uh, go ahead and commit to the running back because the cornerback blitzes are going to come off and force the quarterback to hand it off. All right, guys. The next play I want to uh, next formation I want to look at is the 46 bear under. Now I did this in the scheme of the week already, and uh, what we're going to do with this formation is uh, we're just going to do this the scheme of the week, and we're going to rush, rinse, and repeat. The base play is the cover one. And uh, literally, I just want to. It's all about the universal pressure. Uh, so if we want to send pressure off the left side, we're going to space the line and bump uh, press coverage. Shift your defensive line to the left. Shift your linebackers to the right. You want to send it off the left side, then you're going to go ahead and globally reblitz your left outside linebacker. And at the snap of the ball, you're going to get the left edge pressure, or you're going to force him into a bad throw to Antonio Rodgers Cromartie. What I really like to do is just use the double side pressure. So in situations where it's second and long, I'll use the cover three. Third and long, I'll use the cover four. Uh, or third and long, I'll use the, the, the cover two man under. Fourth and long, I'll use the... Uh, fourth and long, I'll use the cover uh, cover one. It's just uh, depending on what I want to use. So This is not a bad uh, defense to use. Like I said... Uh, obviously, my favorite plays are out of the cover two, uh, and I like the yellow both safeties. I'll baseline, baseline twice, press coverage. I'll call the disguise cushion coverage, put the corners in yellows, and everybody's in a yellow zone, and the pressure is really going to come intense pressure at the quarterback. So this is why I like to use cover two. So once again, the setup for cover two is baseline press, shift your defensive line to the left, shift your linebackers to the right, and then you're going to globally re-blitz both outside linebackers. Okay. Then what I like to do is I like to yellow everyone on the field that's not in a yellow zone already. And then I'll baseline twice, I'll press coverage again, and I'll call the disguise cushion coverage. It doesn't matter who you use or control. Typically I will use her uh, Landry because he's in the middle hook zone. And you'll see that this is a really good job of taking away everything that they can do in terms of quick reads. So this is what I really like about this bear under formation. That's enough from the bear under. Not a whole lot to break down. We simply just broke it down, so not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. Moving on here. Nickel normal. Uh, nickel normal is really good package uh, if your opponent is coming out in three wide receiver sets. Um, a lot of times, your opponent will, uh, if, you know, if, if your opponent's smart, he'll be using either three wide receiver sets or he'll be using um, one, uh, two wide receiver sets with a tight end. Um, now, the base play out of the nickel normal is the sugar, uh, sugar three seam. And what we like to do is we like to base a line, and we like to shift our linebackers to the right. You don't want to go, you do not need to press out of the nickel normal. Uh, what I like to do is I like to shade coverage down and call the disguise cushion. And like, what I really like about this is all, that's all we had to do. We had to base a line, shift the linebackers to the right, and you're going to see you're going to end up getting right edge pressure at the quarterback. All right. Now, what if we wanted to get pressure off the left edge? Well, we can base a line, shift our linebackers to the right. And then we could just grab Wilson here and blitz him straight down. And you're going to see you're going to get double edge pressure now at the quarterback. Very fast blitzes to set up and very effective. This is really good for defending those no huddle offenses. All right, what about a situation where you want to send it just off the left? Well, we like to audible to our L1 audible, sugar 3 DB fire. And we're going to base a line. We're going to shift our linebackers to the right. We're going to manually move Wilson in off the line of scrimmage. And at the snap of the ball, we're going to get that left edge pressure. All right. Uh, now, what if we wanted to get left edge pressure from that look? Well, we certainly can do that. We're just going to sh uh, call it base line, shift the linebackers to the right, and we're going to re-blitz Quinton Copples here. We're going to slide Wilson down, and at the snap of the ball, now we're going to be able to get two guys free at the quarterback. All right. What about a max coverage defense from this look? 
Well, Sugar Cover 3 Bluff is going to provide a max coverage look. What we like to do is base a line, shift our linebackers to the right to make it look like we're blitzing. And then all we're going to do is, uh, I like to drop my defensive ends into hook zones. And I like to base line twice, of course, and call the disguise cushion coverage. This is going to force the opponent to have to at least make a read. Now, if you want, you can re-yellow Harris so that it's a little bit more into the middle of the field, forcing them to go to the outside into the purples, take the underneath flat routes because the, the purples are going to take away the out routes and the crawl routes and all that. So you're just going to force them to take that underneath 10-yard window. You're dropping everybody back, and you're saying, uh, you have to drive up the field on me. You have to take time. So that's what we like to sugar cover the bluff for. And then as a man blitz complement to our zone blitz, we have the sugar blitz. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to base a line. We're going to shift our linebackers to the right, and then we're going to call man a line. And what's going to happen is you're going to man up over the guys. I really like this because we can really get deceptive with it. And uh, one thing I really like to do is like to run man on one side and zone on the other. So the side that the running back's on, I'll put Harris in a purple to that side. And then I'll yellow both guys over here. And then put Jared in the deep blue and shade coverage to the to the right. So he goes to the middle. It looks like we're in man coverage, but we're not. And we're sending pressure. They get confused. They don't know what to do. And they get sacked. All right. And then if you just wanted to run to man coverage, certainly you can do that. But the middle linebacker is not needed to blitz. We can put him in any zone we want. We can man him up on anybody we want. He is able to be hot routed in any way we feel, in any way we feel uh, possible to. And so now we see we look exactly like our zone look, but now we're in man, and it confuses the opponent, and we get the sack. All right, guys, so that's the nickel normal defense. Pretty quick, uh, starting to get through these guys. And then the nickel wide nine, what we like to do, is very similar to the nickel normal. Uh, we like to come out in the nickel wide nine, and the base play for the nickel wide nine is the sugar two disguise. And what we like to do with the sugar two disguise here, and again, this is for situations where they're coming out in the a, a lot of times coming out in those three wide receiver sets. Um, you know, stuff like that to uh, get matchups or something like that. So, what we like to do with this is we like to base a line and we like to, um, we like to show blitz. And when we show blitz, you see what happens? Harris is going to stack right here. So, base a line, show blitz, and we're going to spread our linebackers. And you see that Harris is going to stack here now, and Richardson's going to stack here. And that's all we have to do for this blitz setup. And you're going to see that the blitz is going to come in off the left edge. Just baseline show blitz and spread your linebackers. Very simple. What if we wanted to get two guys free? Well, we don't have to send it off the right here. So what we want to do is we want to baseline show blitz, spread our linebackers, and we're just going to re-blitz the left to screen outside linebacker. This is now going to spring two guys free off of the left edge. One guy is going to get picked up by the running back, but the other guy is going to come in for the sack. Now... It does not. This formation is certainly not a balanced formation, and that's the one flaw with it, in my opinion. But I mean, as you see with the show blitz feature, we could really make this coverage lock down. I mean, we could put Jared in a yellow, call the disguise cushion coverage we really like to call, uh, and then they have to block a running back, and they don't. And oh, there's two guys coming at the quarterback, and it's just a really decent coverage. All right, guys. Uh, the audible we have is the sugar blitz. What we like to do out of the sugar blitz is we like to base a line, show blitz, spread our outside linebackers. All right, now in this situation, um, this is where we like to re-blitz our left outside linebacker. Or excuse me, we like to globally zone our linebackers and then re-blitz our left outside linebacker. This is going to spring one guy free at the quarterback off the left edge, uh, untouched. All right, if we want to send pressure off of the, or if we want to send another sugar play, we like to use the sugar cover through bluff. This is our maximum coverage defense. We like to base a line. We like to shift our linebackers, uh, or spread our linebackers, excuse me. After we show blitz, of course. All right, and then what I like to do with the sugar cover the bluff, we could obviously send pressure off the left edge with the left outside linebacker by re-blitzing. But what I really like to do with this is I really like to drop Couples into a deep zone and really drop Richardson into a deep zone and put Jarrett here in a hook zone. And then I'll quarterback spy one of my defensive tackles. I'll base the line twice, show blitz again, call the disguise cushion, and now we have a cover four sink type of shell. Really decent coverage up the seams. Above average coverage on the outside. And it's just going to be a really difficult coverage to have to try to go downfield on. So that's why I like to use the cover three bluff for. Obviously we can send pressure just by re-blitzing a guy. And then the last play I want to take a look at is the sugar three DB fire. What we want to do is we want to base a line. We want to show blitz. And we want to spread our linebackers. When we do this, you see we get this look. Now, obviously, the middle linebacker here, Davis, is blitzing. What I like to do is I like to globally zone my linebackers, 
and then I like to globally re-blitz my left outside linebacker. And now you see that we're going to get one guy free off of the left edge, but still have the same kind of coverage look behind it. This is a really good blitzing scheme. Your opponent's not going to know what to do. A lot of times they're going to think that they can throw quick to the to the um, to the right side of the field because the safety is almost always in a deep blue. But when we call the sugar three uh, sugar three play, um, now we're overloading the left side so that this defensive end can drop right into that area and try to get an interception. That's why this play is really effective, guys. All right, so that's the nickel wide nine formation. Let's hop real quickly into the dime normal. Alright guys, uh, the dime normal formation, what we like to do as far as the base play, uh, I really like the, it doesn't really matter, to be honest, uh, I really, really like the DB Blitz, but it is in the audibles, but I'll just, you know, comment in the DB Blitz to show you what we like to do. Now, from DB Blitz, we can do this out of any play, so let's just show you how to two enter. What we like to do with this, with the base align, and then we're going to re-blitz the corner, if, we're, if we want to send pressure, of course. We're going to re-blitz the defensive back uh, wherever we want it to come from. So if we want to come from the left or we want to come from the right, that's who we're going to re-blitz. So in this situation, we're going to come from the left. So we're going to re-blitz Wilson. We're going to spread our defensive line. We're going to crash our defensive line out. We're going to re-blitz Richardson. And we're going to quarterback contain both of the guys on the right side of the screen. And at the snap of the ball, you're going to see you're going to get that left B gap, but it's not as good, and there's a reason for that. It's because we did not call press coverage. Even though we're in a two-man under, we still need to call two, uh, press coverage from this. So what I like to do is I like to um, re-blitz my guy. You don't have to baseline if you don't want to, and then just call press coverage. And now you see when we spread our line and we crash them down, and we're going to quarterback contain uh, our uh, basically four three stat guys is what it turns into. So we're going to contain our left of screen defensive tackle, a right of screen defensive tackle and a right of screen defensive end. And now you're going to see that left edge pressure. All right. Now, what if we want to send it off the right edge? Certainly we can. Two men under, base line, a re-blitz walls. Then you're going to press coverage, spread your defensive line, crash it down. Quarterback contain Wilkerson, quarterback contain Ellis, and quarterback contain Richardson. And at the snap of the ball, you're going to see that you're going to get that right edge pressure at the quarterback. What if you want to send two-way pressure? Well, you certainly can do that as well. What we like to do with that is call two men under with a base in line, and we're just going to re-blitz both of the slot guys. And you can do this out of any play in the dime normal. Once you re-blitz them, then you want to call press coverage, and then you're going to crash your defensive line down, spread them, and then you're going to quarterback contain both of your defensive tackles. And I like to use her, my middle linebacker. And the snap of the ball, you're going to get two guys free at the quarterback, so if they block a halfback, you're going to be able to come in free. Out of all the other plays out of the dime normal, I like to run the max coverage defenses out of the two men under and the three double buzz. But out of the DB blitz, I like to send two-way pressure. So again, we're going to base a line, press coverage now since they're already blitzing. We don't have to re-blitz them. Crash the D-line down. Quarterback contain both of those defensive tackles. And then I personally really am a big fan of using my little middle linebacker in this situation. And you see we're going to get two-way pressure. So if they block the running back, we're still going to come in. We can do this out of a zone look as well. The DB Blitz 2 allows us to. And what we like to do is like to baseline press, spread our defensive line, crash our defensive line down, and we're going to quarterback contain both of these defensive tackles. In this situation, we're now on a cover 2 look, and the offense gets confused, and they don't know what to do, and we're jumping reads all over the place. So that's how I like to use the DB Blitz and the DB Blitz 2 in combination with one another. Again, if they're coming on four wide receivers or heavy passing formations, this is where you would run dime. Last play, 3 double buzz. What I like to do is I like to yellow... Uh, put the slot DBs in hook zones, not flat zones. I like the baseline twice, press coverage, and call the cu the cushion coverage. And you see that it makes these yellow zones really effective. We still have four guys blitzing at the quarterback, and it's just a really effective play. It's going to force the opponent to take the underneath routes and not be able to just rely on his deep passing or underneath, or yeah, deep passing. So that's the dime normal, uh, in a sense, guys. It's really effective, but it's not something I use a lot. Alright guys, now we're going to hop into the dollar three two six, and this is actually one of the reasons I really wanted to run with Miami this year. So dollar three two six, and the base play that we like to come out in is the cover six. Offensively, what we like to, or defensively what we do with this cover six is we want to, uh, if we want to get universal pressure from this formation, we're going to base the line, and we're going to shift our defensive line to the left, we're going to shift our linebackers to the left, we're going to crash our defensive line out, we're going to re-blitz our left outside linebacker. We're going to re-blitz our left out, left of screen defensive end. And then I like the quarterback contain 
my right of screen defensive back. And the snap of the ball, you're going to see we're going to get that left edge pressure at the quarterback. Actually, the right edge came off that time because the offensive line committed to stopping the left side. So depending on what they commit to doing is going to depend on where the pressure actually ends up coming from. But it certainly is an option here. And obviously, you could just re-blitz him if you wanted to. But again, I personally like to contain him. And now at the snap of the ball, you're going to see we end up getting that B-gap pressure, and the contain actually came even off on the left edge there. Now say we want to get pressure off the right edge. Well, what, what are we going to do now? Well, we like to base a line, shift your defensive line to the right, shift your linebackers to the right, crash your defensive line out, re-blitz the linebacker on the right side of the screen, and we like to quarterback contain Josh Wilson in this situation. I like to hook zone to add a little better coverage called the disguise cushion. And now you're set up, and at the snap of the ball, you're going to get that right edge pressure at the quarterback. So we have right edge and left edge pressure. Uh, now we're going to show you how to get right and left edge pressure from the same look. Uh, the play you'd like to use for that is the Mike Edge 3 scene. Now the Mike Edge, or the actually, excuse me, it's called the Fire Zone 3. And uh, I actually don't have it in my audibles. I have all the other, other coverages in, so you're going to need to come out in this play if you want to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to baseline press, shift your defensive line to the left, and shift your linebackers to the left. And this is going to create that look that we showed earlier uh, if we wanted to send pressure off of the left side, but now we're going to send it off the right. So you see, instead of a contain now, this guy is actually blitzing down. And now what you're going to see is you're going to get pressure off of the right edge with that defensive back. This is good because it's going to allow, it's going to force the opponent to now not be able to identify where the pressure comes from. Now, what if we wanted to do it from the opposite way? Well, we're just going to flip the play at the play call screen, and it doesn't change. You see how the formation does not change at all. So we're going to shift our linebackers to the right now, shift our defensive line to the right, slide this guy down, and now you're going to see now, uh, now we're going to bring it off of the left edge. And that time, actually, the middle linebacker came free. So that's the basic concepts out of the dollar three two six basic pressure concepts. Two man under, what I really like to do is I like to, when I'm running coverage D, I run them from all the coverages. So we have coverage you had a cover two sink, cover three, cover six, and cover two man under. And it's the same exact setup for all of them. I'll base a line, I'll shift my linebackers right, or excuse me, I'll shift my linebackers left, and I'll shift my line left. And then I'll crash my defensive line out. I'll re blitz Sean Richardson, quarterback spy Wilkerson, and I'll put the blitzing linebacker in any zone of my choice. In this situation it's gonna be a hook zone. Now we have everybody manned up, and we have a hook zone and a spy across the middle of the field. And you see how fast those guys get off their blocks for a quick sack. Alright, what if I wanted to do it out of cover 6? Well again, base line. I like to press coverage to keep it looking the same. Shift your defensive line to the left, shift your linebackers to the left. Re-blitz Sean Richardson, quarterback spy Muhammad Wilkerson. Slide walls down to make him look like you're blitzing. I like to put Cromarty on a yellow zone, and I'll base line my defense twice and then call press coverage so that the yellow zones play a little better and I'll shade my coverage to the right when I'm in cover six and now at the snap of the ball we have now a zone look and they try to throw a, a man beating route on a curl and now we have a zone sitting in the way that's how we like to use the dollar 36 mix our coverages up force them to take different reads alright guys wrapping up this defensive guide I wanted to touch on the quarter normal formation or the quarter uh, normal formation and the play that the only play I want to go over um, the rest of them are max coverage defenses so the only play that I really want to touch on and this is for five wide, rece five wide receiver situations is a DB strike and the double loop three for the DB strike what we want to do is we want to baseline press shift your defensive line to the left crash your defensive line out and then I like the reblitz Sean Richardson and at the snap of the ball what you're going to see is you're going to get left edge pressure at the quarterback now this is great but can you have right edge pressure out of the same out of the same play Yes, you can. Call double loop three. You're going to base a line. And what I like to do is you're going to take your middle linebacker and you're going to put him in any, in a yellow zone. All right. Then you're going to re-blitz Quentin Copples. And you're going to re-blitz LaRon Landry. And now you see we have the blitz angles needed to create a right edge pressure. All right. So that's the beauty of the DB strike zone is we can do it left and right. So if we wanted to send it off of the right or off of the left now, in the same look, we're going to base a line. Globally, um, we're going to shift our linebacker to the left, and we're going to re-blitz him. We're going to re-blitz Sean Richardson, and we're going to slide Wilson down. And now you're going to see we're going to get pressure uh, up the left B gap with Kyle Wilson. 
So this is how we like to use the quarter normal, and then we like to fake our blitzes by using coverage defenses off of it. So in a situation where we're two men under, we're going to base a line, just like we were blitzing, we're going to press coverage. We're going to shift our D-line to the right to make it look like it's the double loop three, crash our D-line out, reboots Copples, uh, quarterback spy Wilkerson, and we like to put Davis in a hook zone. We're going to shift him to the left, and now you see this is the snap. We look pre-snap. And now we're in max coverage D, and now they don't know exactly what's open. They try to throw a drag route. It's actually covered this time. So this is how I like to use the coverage defenses. All right, guys, real quick, quarter three deep. Uh, here's the blitzes out of it. We like to use the three deep blitz. And what we want to do with this is we want to base the line. And then I personally like to call press coverage. All right. And then we're going to shift our D-line to the left. We're going to crash our D-line out. We're going to re-blitz Sean Richardson. And you're going to see at the snap of the ball, we're going to get left edge pressure. Can you get right edge pressure from this plate? You certainly can. What you want to do to get the right edge pressure, though, is you want to call the 3D blitz. You're going to baseline press, shift your defensive line to the left, crash your defensive line out, re-blitz Richardson. And then you're going to move Davis over here like this. And you're going to re-blitz him over the tackle. You want to make sure he's about five yards off the line of scrimmage. And then if we, since we're only sending it off on one side, we can put Wilson in any zone we want. And at the snap of the ball, you're going to see you're going to get that right edge pressure. So now we have pressure left and right, and then certainly you can have it from both ways. So if we want to send it both ways, we'll call our three deep blitz. We'll baseline press, shift our D-line to the left, crash our D-line out, re-blitz Richardson. Click on the Davis and blitz him over the tackle. Slide walls in just a little bit and slide Wilson in just a little bit and snap the ball. And now we're going to get two guys free at the quarterback. So that's the quarters. And then lastly, I want to show you uh, the three deep under out of the goal line. Three deep under, and it can be applied out of any of the plays of the goal line. It does not just have to revolve around the three deep under. Uh, pretty much any play in the goal line formation, but three deep under is the best. For example, Sam Blitz is going to be used as our man complement. So for goal line situations, you know, uh, what I really like about this is its ability to stop the run. But real quick, I want to show you the pressure we can use. And I'll throw this at my opponent probably once every every half, maybe. Just one time. One time. What I'll do is I'll base a line. I'll back off the coverage. I'll spread my defensive line. And I'll spread my linebackers. When I do this, I want to re-blitz the linebacker on the side I want the pressure to come from. So since I want the pressure to come off the left side, I'm going to re-blitz the left of screen outside linebacker. I'm going to quarterback contain the left of screen defensive end, or defensive tackle, excuse me. I'm going to quarterback spy Muhammad Wilkerson. I'm going to quarterback spy Quentin Copples, and I'm going to quarterback spy Ricky Sapp. And at the snap of the ball, you're going to see that the pressure is not perfect, but it's a quick block shed into the quarterback. Now, if you want the pressure to come clean, you're going to base the line, you're going to back your coverage off, you're going to spread your defensive line, you're going to crash your defensive line out, and you're going to re-blitz your left of screen defensive uh, backer. Now, in a situation like this, we're obviously going to quarterback spy Muhammad Wilkerson or put him in any zone we want. I like purple zones. And now you're going to see at the snap of the ball, you're going to get very fast pressure off of that left edge. Now, say you wanted to get it off the right edge. You certainly can do that. Base the line, back the coverage off, spread your linebackers, re-blitz your, your right of screen linebacker, spread your line, cross your line out, quarterback spy Muhammad Wilkerson or put him in a purple zone to the right side of the field to cover that area. And at the snap of the ball, you're going to get pressure off of the right edge. And that time my opponent tripped me up. But it's still, I mean, you saw the blitz cams in. But the real concept I really like out of 3 Dependent is to, is to play a mind game with them. A lot of people don't expect you to come out in this package. And uh, we like, they, they'll typically like to throw it, um, like to spread you out and try to throw it deep. Well, if they do this, we're going to do this. We're going to globally blitz our linebackers. And then we're going to globally zone our linebackers. And then what I like to do is, I like to globally zone everybody except for the nose tackle. And I'll base the line twice, and I'll call the disguise cushion coverage. And at the snap of the ball, obviously I'll pass him in, and I'll back off the coverage. And at the snap of the ball, we have like a cover three sink. Everybody's in zones. You see they fake blitz, and they drop into zones. It's actually a really good coverage for deep down the field, and we could possibly force our opponent to throw it deep. All right, guys, so here we are. We're at the end of the guide, and uh, I really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, I, really, I really am apologetic, and I really do... Sincerely apologize for what happened with the with the original ebook. I'm really really sorry that it didn't work out. That I was able to get it. I wasn't able to get it up fast enough. Um, but this is a nice alternative for you to get you at least going, and it's an hour's worth of content for you. Uh, full playbook breakdown out of the Miami Dolphins defensive playbook. If you guys have any questions about it, if I went too fast and you need something more explained, 
Leave it in the comments below. I'll try to go with you as soon as possible. I really do appreciate all the support you guys give me. I hope you guys can use this playbook to your advantage in Madden NFL 25. I can't wait to hear the responses about how many W's you guys are going to be getting and how many sacks you're going to be getting in the game. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you're new to the YouTube channel and you need more help, let me know. Uh, if you're not new to the YouTube channel and you would like to do me a favor, please share this video on Twitter. Let everybody know about this free scheme out of the Miami Dolphins playbook. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I really appreciate you guys spending an hour with me to break this down. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.